Chapter 17. Andrew Venice parked his car on the street in front of the house and double-checked the address he'd written down on a slip of paper. Yeah, this was the place, all right. It was an ordinary house on an ordinary street. There was nothing special about it. Nowhere special. I always wanted to go there. Just plain. Nothing here looked like it might be connected to murder or assault or anything like that. Richard Isaac, the man he'd come to interview, was a stock manipulator. And you'd think he'd live in a fancier place, a nicer house on a better street. But since he was also a police informant, maybe he wanted to keep a low profile. Not do anything to stand out. Not exactly like the Witnesses Protection Program. But not all that different. Or maybe he just wasn't that good at manipulating stocks. Venice would try to find out, in addition to finding out what he really came here to ask about. He put the note on the front seat and his sunglasses in the glove compartment, checking his reflection in the rearview mirror and smoothing back his hair. Turning 40 was hard. He didn't know what he'd been planning to do at 40, but it was damn sure this wasn't it. Oh well, it was his job. And he was the one to do it. It's no living. He'd better get going, ask his questions, make his report. Then he'd have time to stop by the gym later, work out a bit, fight off the ravages of time. He was still in his prime, even if he had to work harder to maintain it. Getting out of the car, he looked both ways, then shut the door and used the key fob to lock all the doors. It wasn't a bad neighborhood or anything like that, but he still didn't want to take any chances. He let a minivan go past, then an SUV, then he walked around the front of his car and up the long sidewalk to the porch. Get over there! A bench sat on the porch, the kind you might sit on and drink some lemonade. Why are you eyeing my lemon drink? But it didn't look used, like nobody had had any lemonade to drink there for a while. What? No! Or maybe they just didn't like the porch or something. Isaacs probably had to keep a low profile anyway. He wasn't the kind of guy who spent a lot of time outside making friends with the neighbors. Venice went to knock on the door and stopped. There was a flyer lying on the welcome mat. No, it was one of those bags of advertisements they paid neighborhood kids to deliver. One of those circulars. There was a cardboard box full of them just off to the side of the door. He picked up the new one and held it in his hand as he knocked on the door with his knuckles, loud enough so anyone inside could hear him, but not pounding or anything like that. Watching his reflection in the storm door, smoothing the lapels on his suit jacket so he'd be sure to look nice, the door opened. Richard Isaacs were the man who answered the door. He looked over Venice, wondering who this guy was at his door and what he was doing here. Venice got into his pocket and pulled out his wallet, flipped it open to a show-hid badge. Hi, my name is Andrew Venice, he said cheerfully, like there was nothing unusual about him showing up there in the middle of the day. I'm here to ask you a few questions. It's no big deal. I just need to ask him a few questions. That was just what Venice wanted him to think, Isaacs thought. They always said it was no big deal when they were trying to nail you. I found this lying outside your door, Andrew said. You want it? What was this guy trying to do, being friendly to him? No, just toss it in there, into the circular file, Isaacs pointed. Toss it in the where? That box right there beside the door, he said, pointed to the box. He was getting mad. It's not a circle, it's more of a square said Venice. Or a rectangle, baby! It's a joke, all right. Now, Isax was really, really mad. But I am mad, so cannot be sure of anything. Well, how can you be sure you're mad? Mm -hmm. I put the circulars in the circular file. But that crazy Venice guy just offered it again. You sure you don't want it? They got good deals inside. Could save you some money. Just throw it away. I wish the kids would stop delivering them. Hey, listen, said Venice, sticking his hands into his pockets. I don't have all day here. I'm on an investigation. I came to ask you some important questions. And I want some answers.
I don't have to answer anything you ask, Richard Isaacs replied forcefully. He wanted to make a point. I am going to stay up there on the porch and scare off all the neighbors. Or are you going to come inside? I'll come inside and ask you my questions there. I want to ask you about Margaret Eastman. Isaacs knew he was going to be regretting this later, but he said, Come on inside anyway. Even though he didn't want the guy inside, but what were you going to do? That's what they expected from you once you got messed up with the police. You're not out. You're not out. When you are dead, then you are out. But he didn't have to play their game. Venice walked into the living room, not sure what to expect. Something about Isaacs didn't end up right. Either he was living in a plain house in his plain neighborhood because of frugality, because he was cheap, or there was some other reason. He couldn't figure Isaacs out like there was something he was hiding. Even though Venice knew he was in his mid-sixties, he looked more like a tough guy than a stock market expert. He had broad shoulders and a narrow waist, muscular. His cheeks were ruddy, like he spent a lot of time outside in the sun and the wind. Damn genetics! Some people didn't have to work for anything and had it all anyway. He didn't look like a guy who just turned 40 and needed Viagra to get it up anymore. But Venice wasn't here to feel sorry for himself. He had a job to do, and it was time to do it. Get on with it. Isaac sat down in the brown reclining chair with a plop in front of the big screen TV, and he pointed to the couch. Why don't you sit down, he suggested, like a man who meant it. Venice wasn't going to let himself be pushed around that way by some informant. I think I'll stand. This will just take a few minutes. So get started already. Isaacs would be glad when this interview was over, so he could watch his football game. You follow the Falcons at all? I'm not really a football fan said Venice, although he split a pair of season tickets with his brother-in-law, went to half the games. He looked at the TV for a second, trying to spot Bill in the crowd. Bill was married to his little sister Leslie. He adored Leslie. Bill was a great guy, just the kind of guy he'd rather be spending the afternoon with. Then he thought he sounded like some wuss for saying that, so he added, I think the West Coast offense really ought to open things up for Vic, though. They should make the playoffs next year. Yeah, said Isaacs passionately. He loved football. He didn't mind all the damn questions now so much. Not if this Venice character liked the Falcons. So you wanted to ask me about somebody, some Mary, Maury. Her name is Margaret Eastman, Venice said. His veins turned to ice at the mention of her name. Things like that shouldn't happen to a young woman like her. Who is she? Isax asked. Yeah, who is she? The door to the kitchen slammed open, and in walked the most beautiful woman Venice had seen today. Or maybe in a week. I can tell the jewel of the most beautiful girl in the room. The more he looked at her, more, he thought, maybe, in a lifetime. But he didn't have a whole lifetime of experience yet. But she was incredibly beautiful. Her eyes blast with curiosity. Or maybe it was jealousy. She was older for a beautiful woman, maybe 40. Maybe the exact same age as Venice. She was wearing a bra under her tight blouse. And she was wearing lipstick, too. And he couldn't help staring at her. Her hair was pretty, too, like it was made out of silk. Just that kind of shiny. Hey, Monica, we need some privacy to discuss business, says Isaacs. It's just man talk. Nothing you'd be interested in. If it's another woman again, you bet I'm interested, she said, adjusting her breasts to make them stick out more. <laughs> Venice was still staring at her. He couldn't take his eyes off her. And she was looking at his eyes like she was touching herself for him to be prettier for him. He couldn't believe it. I don't know who she is, Isaac said. 
that he was regretting inviting Venice into the house again. You sure you don't know anything about her? Venice asked. Monica stared at him with her lips making a little red pout. If I knew anything about her, you can bet I'd let you know, she said, slapping Isax on the top of his head. Ow! he said, grabbing the top of his head. He looked at Venice again and said, I said I don't know her or anything about her. She was the nurse at the hospital where Bruce Lucen recovered from his automobile accident, Venice said. She's really beautiful, like you wouldn't believe. She has brown hair. I know you like women with brown hair, you two-timing jerks, Monica said. She was hitting Isaacs on the top of his head again, and he jumped up and yelled, Stop that! I said I don't know anything, and I don't know her! I could show you pictures, Venice said. He had a lot of pictures of her, but he didn't want to share all of them. Not with this scum. He's a scumbag, that's what he is. <laughs> he's, he's a great big bag of scum. <laughs> Scumming around in a big bag, that's what he is. It might help your memory some. Listen, buddies. You and he were buddies, weren't you? Isaac said. You came here, so you take what you get and leave. I said I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. That's all there is to it. Why don't you take me? Monica purred at him. Hey, now, I don't like that, Isaac said. And now he was mad at all of them for ruining his day. He was mad enough to hurt somebody. He'd killed a man before one time with his bare hands. And he could do it again if he put something in his bare hands, like a knife or a gun or something that he could kill somebody with. Venice sensed trouble ahead, but he wanted to see more of Monica. He had the sense, though, that they were just ships passing in the night. That she was just some temporary liaison of Richard Isaacs. Probably just another cheap tramp or something like all the others. Maybe she could be different. But it wasn't going to be in this lifetime. Not with him. Well, if you don't know anything, I guess I'll be going. He said. Walking down the sidewalk, the car waited for him at the curb. He stopped before opening the door and looked back up at the house. He saw Isaac standing in the window frame, looking back at him. Somebody was hiding something here, but Venice knew he was a bulldog. He'd get to the bottom of it yet. And it didn't matter who got hurt along the way, because he was going to find out the answers. You're, you're on my mind. Getting a very strange sense of deja vu from this chapter. Wonder what it could be. Oh well, thanks to all my Patreon supporters, particularly uh, Break System BSE and Michael Maris, as always. That was just what Venice wanted him to think.